Hello, and welcome to Core Sampler, the podcast where we drill into the Sitecore community to bring you insights into the work talented people are doing every day on the Sitecore Experience platform. Whether you're a developer, a marketer, or both, we're glad you're here. Welcome to the Get to Know an MVP, a new episode. My name is Tomasz Forga, and today I would like to introduce you to Mark Stiles. Welcome to the show, Mark. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. I am, my name is Mark Stiles. I, I live in Boston, and I work for a company called Valera. I'm a technical director there. And I've been doing Sitecore development since 2007, so that put me 13 years. Wow, that's a long time. Um, how did you join the Sitecore community? Uh, when I started, I was uh, in 2007, for anybody who doesn't no, the internet was a different place at that time. So you, you know, iPhones are just coming out. YouTube is still pretty new, and I don't think Stack Overflow existed at that point. So we were relying a lot on people who had done things on their own time and posted blog posts about it. So for me, the community was was that anything you could find on the internet when you were desperate in times of need. So a lot of things you would find, you know, were just like these teardowns of like a piece of software or something, somebody built some custom pipeline or some, fix some bug. So for me, the community was this lifeline. It was like always just trying to trying to find this person who knew this thing that you needed to get this deadline done. And they were always there. It was always somebody out at like midnight or 3 a.m. on the other side of the earth, like posting something. And I guess too, early in the days of Psychor, we had the Ukraine team, which I don't know if, how many people remember them. But you would get the support number and they would email you back and you would you'd be talking to these guys in Ukraine at whatever hour it was for them. And they would just like relentlessly work you through the problem until you figured it out. So to me, the community has just been this just like source of like, you know, a resource that I could always like rely on and tap into whenever I was in, in trouble. <laughs> so a good friend, I think of it. I think a community like that. Okay, and what do you find uh, most appealing in the community? You know, the, the people themselves, you know what I mean? It, you think of, like, the people that probably are the, the higher, bigger names that you've seen, the people who have written the most blog posts, or they're, they're the most active. Even Akshay, who's got, like, a hackathon. You know, they're, they're just people that, they just spend their own time trying to help people, trying to coordinate and give people encouragement. You know, I, th- I think that's really what I like about it. It's just, just it's such a great, group of people that give a lot of positive energy to this this otherwise you know it's, it's kind of like a closed source private expensive pay-to-play platform but there's this huge open community behind it that drives a lot of the the innovation too all right uh you are also a longtime mvp uh, what is your suggestion for someone who would like to be an mvp the thing about mvps and the community is, there's a broad community of people who, who do a lot of work, who contribute a lot of things. But the thing I think that separates MVPs is how much time they actually sacrifice of their own days, nights, and weekends. Every one of them has had to sacrifice so much of their time to, to become an MVP, whether it's just like sitting, decompiling code, crawling through all the binaries, adding new features, or or just kind of discovering new ideas or pushing even just the DevOps to another level. You know, I think of all the, the guys doing all the Docker work right now. But the MVPs are really the guys who are just like committed beyond what you could imagine. They just, I don't know, they have a passion <laughs> that most people just don't have. You know, don't be intimidated by, by the idea of becoming an MVP, but if you want to be one, I'd say you really, you really should be thinking of long term. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. Um, but if you're into that kind of thing, so this is a community for you because this is this is really what it's about. And whenever you meet one, you kind of look at them you, at like a 100-yard stare. You know, you're like, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Late at night, errors up to my eyeballs, like, you know, fighting my way through. But then you get it. You, you get this, like, I don't know. There's a lot of, like, love and respect when you guys finally get together and, and we have that MVP summit and, and we can finally just kind of talk and relax a little bit. It's a really great community, but if you want to get into it, it, it is a sacrifice. I'm not going to lie to you. It's just a lot of time. 
So you, you also known for your catching exception series and of course the cognitive services module. Would you like to talk a little bit more about those? So the the interesting thing about catching exceptions and the cognitive services is there they both kind of are tied together in some way. So early when I when I started the catching exceptions, I was starting to do research on on uh, machine learning algorithms. And I had done a presentation at Shukhan, thought it was going well, but I didn't have, people weren't talking about it. They weren't like asking questions, like they didn't even know what to ask. So I was like, how do I keep, how do I get more attention on what I'm trying to say and and give, give this idea that I know is important some some fuel? And I was like, man, I really need to, I don't, you know, I have my blog posts and, and I'd written a good deal at that time, but I didn't have enough of like a, a voice, I felt like. So I wanted more of a voice. And I was just, you know, sitting around thinking one day and I was like, I got it. You know, I used to make videos when I was a kid. They were really, you know, amateurish, but I know how to make a video. So I was like, all right, I'll figure this out. I can, I can make a video. And I was like, what can I talk about? I was like, the only thing I really know are the people. So I was like, I should do some interviews and just, you know, like how many people know what developers are like like you know we have these terrible views of them from television like nerdy geeky but i was like that's not like any of them that i've met so it'd be interesting to show what developers are really like and in doing so you know give myself like the ability to to be out there a little more and talk about some of the other stuff and then you know it just kind of spiraled out of control from there because i got a drone and started taking videos and before i knew it i was just spending so much time editing but i love it i love making those videos spending the time with the people and then you know it kind of morphed into doing roundtable discussions which i really enjoyed and just getting people to talk about ideas and share share their experiences um but it was really great just being able to to have that time with those people and really experience it because i didn't grow up in 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 technology so i was you know i got into it in college and I was just so, I was like, how does all these people, you know, so good at it? I was like, I'm so, I'm not that good at it <laughs> at the time. And I was just, I was, I was asking these questions, like, where did you come from? How'd you learn this stuff? And it turns out everybody like grew up doing it. So I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> so, you know, like I learned a lot through the process of, of sitting with people and talking to them. And I hope other people have, have like gotten to know their community, you know, a little bit better and feel like they they can kind of fit in a little bit more. But along that path too, hope you know some of the roundtable discussions I did were again promoting machine learning, which was I was my real passion because I I saw what the technology could do a long time ago, and I was like, man, you know, this would be really cool if we could bring this to bear. And over the years, I was slowly picking up. You know, at, at some point, I was building my own algorithms, which was not that efficient. But then, at one point, they were, you know, cognitive services came out, Microsoft's cognitive services. And they just, it was basically an open set of APIs you could connect to. They're cheap, they're already in Azure, you can scale them, it's fine. Every difficult problem that you had to solve was already solved, except for, you know, you just had to know what to do with it. And I've been sitting around thinking about it so long, I was like, I know exactly what to do. You know, I, I could apply it to so many different things, I was just... I don't know. I'm still kind of on fire for just the whole idea of trying to enable people with all this new technology. Um, and the cognitive services is basically that framework. It's the connectors to all these APIs so that people who are just coming in and they're, they're trying to explore and trying to do new things, they have something that can just get them to building more applications that are interesting than spending time, you know, building all the wiring and, and thinking about like kind of more of the annoying part of development and just think about more of like the, the feature part. For me, again, like I didn't, I didn't grow up in it. I was always more enamored with how the applications worked for me than how, how they were built underneath. You know, and it's probably the terrible thing to be as a developer, but mm-hmm. I guess I always thought of, you know, for me, the application was always about the result. It was about like, how does this help a person who's using it? You know, if, if we build this architecture this way, that's great. But at the end of the day, like it has to help the user who's 
officially paying us to do all this work. Like, I want to make sure that they're happy, that they're getting something. So, the thinking of Sitecore from a way of how easy is it? How much productivity can people get out of it? Like, that's important. You know, there, there's a, it's very important to be able to deploy and, and have good code and structure and all that. It is very important. But at the end of the day, if you spend all your time doing that and you don't think about the user, you will, I don't know, you miss a big part of it. So for me, it was always this, this whole cognitive service is about exploring this new frontier of technology that will open up doors for us to give people so much more value from the product. And the sooner we realize that, the better. But it's, uh, it's still tough because I know that everybody has their, their own timelines and their deadlines and their projects and things like that. But it is nice to, to have something to kind of dream about to have something to kind of shoot for, bigger goal, you know, like a, where is this going? What, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. As a last question, what would be your message uh, to the community? So my message to the community, I guess it's probably a recurring theme of the things I've been doing, which is to be, be passionate about this. Be, explore new ideas. Uh, encourage other people. Share what you know. Be a good community member and and just enjoy what you do. We live in a, a really interesting time and a really great point in history where we have so much technology and power and, and scalability and, and everything that we're almost at a point where you whatever you think you could do, you could do it. Work with the people that you have and be brave. Go try something new. Get out there and really and really just you know, show the world what you've got, but don't don't hide in your <laughs> don't hide in your in your dev shop with with all your knowledge. Just bring it out there. Bring it to bring it to the rest of us and share it, because we we all benefit from having each other. That's really great to hear. And um, with that, uh, thank you for sharing your story and, of course, being the inspiration for this podcast. Absolutely, man. Thank you. It's great to know. Uh, next time you hear me. We were going to know another MVP. Till then, cultivate the community.